Hello everyone, Jeb here. In today's video, we are going to discuss mortgage delinquency and mortgage forbearance in more detail. We're not gonna talk about the process of filing for mortgage forbearance, but more importantly, what happens when mortgage forbearance ends? Are people continuing to make their payments? Are they becoming delinquent on their mortgage? As you probably know, there's a lot of people out there that believe that delinquencies and all of this forbearance is going to be the catalyst that's you know that sends the housing market into a tailspin and more or less creates the next housing crash so we're going to take a look at those numbers and see exactly what is happening when people exit forbearance we're going to talk about when the majority of forbearances are set to expire a lot of believe, people believe that that's going to happen at the end of the year and then as, as of january 1st you're going to have all of this turmoil hit the market at one time so we're going to take a look at the actual numbers and see what's going on there and then we're going to talk about you know the top 10 most delinquent uh, areas in the United States because if you're a buyer and you're considering buying in one of these areas it's something to be aware of um, because you know these are the areas that could potentially get hit the hardest especially if unemployment continues to rise if a vaccine is not effective etc so what I want to do is I want to pull up a couple of charts from Black Knight um, this is their mortgage data, and this is from October. Now, I realize October is a month and a half ago, um, but understand it takes a while to, to compose this data, and so you're always essentially a month behind when looking at the data. Um, for mortgage delinquencies, really for anything that's that's you know that that's has to do with housing. So you know this report is from October. Um, you know I recently did one from September where I talked about those numbers, which I'll link to here if you want to take a look at it. Uh, but let's take a look and start with the top 10 most affected areas in the United States because again, if you're a buyer in these areas, you need to be aware. And if you're a seller, you know, this is something that, you know, if you were considering selling, maybe now could be the time to get out before there's any potential issues in those markets. Now, we don't know what's going to happen, right? There's a very good chance that you're going to see additional stimulus come to the market as early as this week um, that could help people. Um, it could s extend mortgage forbearance. It could provide an opportunity for people to continue filing for mortgage forbearance, but we, which we don't know. Um, but likely we'll have um, you know, some, some stimulus for tenants, for potential landlords to help out with that side of things. But outside of that, we want to look at mortgage delinquencies and see exactly what's going on. Before we take a look at that though, do me a favor. If you're new to me, new to my channel, you like all things real estate, hit that subscribe button. And if you have questions about the data that I'm putting out there, any of the information, do me a favor and comment below. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this report here. And so this shows the change in delinquency rate in these areas since February. Why February? Because February is essentially when the pandemic started to hit the United States, when people started to have issues. Um, we all know that, you know, I think March 13th, it was Friday the 13th, is when, you know, essentially the, the economy more or less started to shut down. So that's when things really started to hit, hit the fan, if you will. Um, but, you know, if we look at these areas here, we can see that Las Vegas is at the top of the list. 6.3% increase since February in delinquency rates. What is delinquency? What are they What are they saying when they say delinquency? Well, they're talking, you know, people that are past due on their mortgage. Doesn't mean that they can't make their payments. It doesn't mean that they're not taking advantage of the system. It just means they're delinquent on their mortgage. But what is that? What does that actually mean? Well, it means they could be in mortgage forbearance. So if you're currently in forbearance and you're not making your payments, even though you're allowed to not make your payments, you're considered delinquent on your mortgage. So understand when looking at these numbers, the numbers are likely higher than they should be because people um, that you know are allowed to miss their payments are missing their payments. They're also taking into account people in forbearance that are continuing to make their payments. So if you're in forbearance, if you filed for forbearance, it shows as forbearance, but you're making your payments, you're also one of these stats based on the information that they provided. So understand 
that just because it says delinquent doesn't mean that you have all of these people that are completely past due and and not doing anything about it these are people that are you know potentially working with their their lenders these are people that are in forbearance these are people that you know have some assistance it's not people just not making their payments so um let's pull this back up here so you can see las vegas las vegas is a huge entertainment area huge travel destination because travel's been limited because entertainment has essentially been limited hotels have more or less been shut down restaurants have been shut down you have a lot of people that are unemployed likely filing for mortgage forbearance and you know because of that they've become delinquent on their mortgage miami again a big travel spot big entertainment area um, also one of the hardest hit areas again orlando you know disney world all the hotels all the entertainment all the restaurants that are around there these are these are markets that are typically big travel destinations um, have been hit the hardest because people aren't able to travel and then you can also see areas with the smallest delinquency rates. Actually, Detroit has seen the greatest improvement, with 46% of people um, that have a coded that had a COVID-related delinquency uh, being erased. So 46% of people in Detroit that had, you know, filed for forbearance are actually out, um, and and the biggest improved area. Uh, but let's take a look at the next report here. So now this shows mortgage delinquency by property type. You know, we're looking at single family homes, condos, and two to four units. As you would have likely expected, two to four units have been hit the hardest because those are the ones that are tenant occupied. And because of the moratoriums out there with evictions, people have been able to stay in their property, not pay rent, and not be evicted, if you will. And so because these people aren't paying their rent, you know, landlords are either having to file for mortgage forbearance or have missed payments on their on their property because they have no rents coming in, and this has created a higher delinquency rate among you know two to four unit properties. And I currently, you know, at the height it was somewhere around twelve percent, currently down to nine percent. So two to four units are are right now the hardest hit when it comes to property type. Now this is a look at when the majority of forbearance plans are going to expire. Now, a lot of people think at the end of the year, January 1st is going to be, you know, the start of the demise, if you will, that the housing crash, everything is going to fall apart. We already know that if you're in a home that has a federally backed loan by Fannie or Freddie, they've extended that moratorium until the end of January. There's likely going to be additional stimulus that comes out this week that could delay that even further um, because the federal the federally backed uh, moratorium expires at the end of the year. So, you know, chances are it's going to get kicked, you know, the can's going to get kicked a little bit further down the road. But the other catalyst that a lot of people believe is that when all of these forbearances expire, people aren't going to be able to continue making their payments. What you're going to see here is that the majority of these expire over the course of 12 months. It's not just one month when all of these are set to expire. So it's not like you have every forbearance that, you know, that started uh, at the same time expiring at the same time. You can see here that in March, you have nearly 25% of the forbearances expiring. Between January and February, you have somewhere around, what, seven, maybe 8% expiring during that time. But the majority of these are expiring between April and November. And let's just say that this could also get extended. We don't know what's going to happen yet. And even now, I mean, people still have two weeks or so to file for mortgage forbearance if they haven't already done so. So you'll get people that still need mortgage forbearance that file for it now that will have an additional 12 months. So, you know, while forbearances continue to see widespread declines, based on the current rate of improvement, there would still be still be nearly 2 million active plans at the end of March. So even in March, when all of those forbearance plans expire, because you know the CARES Act came in in March and gave people the ability to take advantage of forbearance, so the majority of people filed in March when that initially came out, you still have 2 million people after March that will be expiring. So that's why you're not going to see this huge wave of all of these hit the market at one time. Um, which is, is is a good thing, right? It gives people the you know time based on when they filed for mortgage forbearance to regain employment, to potentially um, 
you know, have some other source of income so they can continue making those payments. And then lastly, you have, you know, what's happening to mortgage forbearance when people exit, right? So a lot of people out there believe, hey, well, when forbearance ends, these people aren't going to be able to make their payments and they're just going to foreclose on, on their property. Well, you know, if you've watched my videos in the past, I've talked about, you know, there's a lot of people out there actually taking advantage of the system. How do I know that? Because a lot of you guys have reached out to me and told me that you're taking advantage of the system. You know, they filed for mortgage forbearance when they didn't need to, to save that money because they were allowed to. There were really no negative effects to doing it and you had a lot of people take advantage of that. And that could be why the numbers um, are good coming out of forbearance. And the other thing is people have regained employment, uh, you know, some jobs have come back, et cetera. So what we'll see here is that, you know, Currently, there are 43% of people either active in forbearance from their original term. There's 8% of those people that are active from their original term. And there's 35% people that have extended their forbearance because initially when forbearance came out, you know, lenders were only giving people three months, six months at the most, when in reality they had a full year and so people have extended it because they needed more time or maybe they just wanted to to take advantage of it longer uh, but 43 percent of people that originally filed for forbearance are still in some form of forbearance but what you have is you've got you know also here you've got the you know 39 percent of people that have exited forbearance are performing on their loan. That means they're making their monthly payments on time. And then you've got another 9% that have either sold their home and or refinanced. So between that, you've got 48% of people that have exited forbearance and continuing to make their payments on time and or have paid their mortgage off. You've got 43% of people that are still in forbearance. So while they're delinquent, they're allowed to be delinquent. Then you have 7% of people who have exited forbearance and they're working with their lender to try to figure out some sort of payment plan, modify their loan, or what have you. So these people are actively trying to keep their homes and chances are there will be some sort of solution there. But you have 2%. So 2% of people are delinquent on their mortgage. So 2% is a very, very small number of people that are actually not able to make their payments. So yes, you will have some foreclosures as a result of this. Yes, you could potentially have a short sale as a result of this, but it's not you know, this huge wave that a lot of people think that it is. Um, with that said, you have lenders, you know, currently working with homeowners. I've had a lot of you guys reach out to me directly and say that you were able to get, you know, your missed payments while you are in forbearance deferred to the end of your loan. I've also had people come out and say that they weren't able to get the deferment, but they are on a repayment plan, um, you know, and, and or have modified their mortgage. So lenders are actually working with homeowners um, to figure out a solution. You know, a lot of people out there believe that the bank just wants to take it, you know, your property. They want your property. It's some sort of conspiracy. And the reality is banks don't want your property, right? They, it, they lose money when they take your property. One, because they end up selling it for less money than, than um, you owe on it. So they lose money there. There's also court costs. There's, you know, foreclosure costs to, to foreclose on a property. So banks lose money by taking your property. They don't want them. Um, so they're going to do what they can to help you, you know, when exiting forbearance to try to figure out some sort of solution. So, you know, you know, as I've mentioned, these reports are a month old, but as we get new data, I'll continue to put it out there. If you have questions about mortgage forbearance, do me a favor, reach out to me directly. I'm on, if you haven't done so already, hit that like button. Um, but for now, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate your support. See you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.